On fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle, big, big, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. It's a unique hustle, nigga. Big shit, big shit, big shit, big shit. Name another podcast like this. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, my dad. Man, on. hey, man, we got a guy just pulled up on me today, man. Hey, he don't need no introduction. If y'all been in the scene. If y'all ain't in the scene, y'all won't see him. But when you're on the move, if you're trying to go to a party, if you're trying to understand what's going on in the city, if you're trying to understand what's going on with the music, you got to run into my boy, DJ Trap. What's up, baby? What's going on, my guy? Hey, man, thank you for coming on the show, man. Hey, man, anytime, anytime. Say, man, hey, man, um, you know, I always like to go back, right? We go back. How far back? Way back. Way back. You know what I'm talking about, man? So you came up in Dallas. Right. What part of Dallas you from? I, I jumped out the porch in Oak Cliff. Oak Cliff. Yeah. But but at the end of the day, where where like like coming up in Oak Cliff in the in the in the like junior high. Yeah. What what was going on? What I what, mean, what what was going on in those times? Cause this was what these were the nineties. Yeah. What what was I like, mean, what, like, I mean, like, like like the nineties to the 2000, 2005? Yeah. What 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 was going on from 90, 90, 99, 2005, six? I mean. Oak Cliff was Oak Cliff really a jungle. I mean, it's like any other hood, you know. Everybody, every city, every state, they got a hood where you know it's the mecca. You know what I'm saying? And Oak Cliff is the mecca of Dallas. If you if you ask me, it's the mecca. You know what I'm saying? When you think Dallas, you got to think oh, you go across that bridge, you in Oak Cliff. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So you got to understand we we made it that way though. Like we we stepping it that way. Everybody say, hey man, y'all always run around saying. Oak Cliff America and all this, like, we making it that way. We want it to be stamped that way. Just like when you go to Atlanta, you hear Zone 6. Yeah. You hear Zone 4. You know what I'm saying? In Dallas, when you come to Dallas, we want you to hear Oak Cliff. And they do. You know what I'm saying? And they so, do. You can't come up here. And, and, and as soon as I take one of these cats to Oak Cliff, they be like, man, we in Oak Cliff? Yeah. Like, these niggas got these <laughs> niggas. <laughs> these niggas got these niggas feeling some type of way when they come to the D. I mean, it's just, it's, it's our home. It's our sanctuary. You know, we're going to protect it at all costs. Yeah, you know I saying? like I said um, when when my son called me because shout out Trey man Trey called me like man dad you gotta you gotta you gotta in, interview this guy right here I said who is he man uh, he DJ Trap I said well, I gotta interview another DJ I did DJ uh, go DJ Fresh Frost yeah I did I B Y B I did all these DJ who I met DJ with and did. Man, K-Rock. even K, yeah, K Rock, oh, yeah, 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 we, yeah. We we brought through and awarded awarded K Rock. We give out awards here too, right? Yeah, yeah, we blessing the we blessing the city. Ain't That's nobody else doing love. that on no. Right. And if y'all started, nigga, y'all copied me. But I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but it's cool though, man. If you want to bless somebody, that's dope. You know what yeah. I mean? Just to try to tell somebody, you know, we don't want to just wait till you die, but we're gonna give you roses while you're here. So that's what we do here. Recognize the hard work. While yeah, it's going yeah, on. you guys are killing it, y'all out there. Yeah. You look what y'all going through to try to get, you know. Everybody recognized in the city, like you just said about Oak Cliff. That DJ had to play those songs, Oak Cliff, That's My Hood. Yeah. And all that different stuff that's going on, the new remix of that as well. Yeah. And the new remake of that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That That's where you come in. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, where'd you go to high school at? I went to a couple of high schools. Like, I moved around. I went to Lake Highlands. I went to North Garland. I went to uh, Lakeview Centennial. I went to Sock. Damn, I went to Yeah. I you played football that, that, or NBA? I played basketball. So much. I mean, it was just the, the situation that I had going on. I mean, me, I was a, I was a what you call a rebellious child. You know what I'm saying? Why my were mama, you rebellious? I, I was rebellious because I had a, a mother that was that kept her foot on my neck. You know, and at the time, I wasn't understanding what was going on. I just wanted to go do what I wanted to do and see my friends do. So when I was coming up in high school, you know, a lot of times she'd be like, "Okay, you need to go stay over there with your cousins, your male cousins, because." You doing too much over here. So now I'm at this school and they stay way over here in Garland. So now I got to go to North Garland. I get kicked out of that school for fighting and getting into it. So now I got to go to Lake Highlands. You know what I'm saying? And then after those situations messed up, well, I'm going to let you go stay with your granny. Now I got to go back to SOP. You know what I'm saying? So that's how I really moved around. But Dude, Where was your dad during all this time? My dad was in the Navy for 22 years. Oh, and in the Navy. she didn't want to move out there with him? Uh... 
I don't know. I couldn't. I, I couldn't answer <laughs> that question. You I, can't nah, answer the question. They wasn't, they, they wasn't together, but okay. nah, she did. I don't think she. If she did, she would have did it. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? But he was in Norfolk, Virginia. I actually stayed with him. I went to Norfolk, Norfolk, Virginia, Dang. and went to Norview High School for one semester. Wow, oh, you couldn't deal with this, the way how he was straight. It was just different. I wasn't used to it. I was used to. I wanted to be in Dallas. I wanted to be in the hood. I wanted to be in the streets. So it was like, nah, I can't stay out here. This, he I don't know nobody out here. And he wasn't the type of father that would say, "You ain't leaving nowhere. You ain't got no." Choice. I mean, he did, but you know, like I said, I I grew up real fast. You know what I'm saying? And I had a strong mind at a young age, so I knew what I wanted to do. So I was like, okay, you could tell me this, but on the other hand, I'm about to figure out a way for it to go my way that I want it to be. How old were you at that time when you were living out there? When I was living out there, I was what? 16? Okay, 15, so 16? Like you thought you age. wanted to go out there? Yeah. Huh? I thought I did. Yeah. You know, my mom was like, you want to go live with your daddy? I'm like, yeah, I go live with my daddy. Why not? Check it out. Did you have a good on. relationship with him? I mean, it was cool. It was cool. It wasn't. Was like I wouldn't just say it was. Yeah, I wouldn't say it was just a good relationship because my whole life I lived with my mama. Right. So when I started living with my daddy for that little one semester, it was almost like, man, I don't even know you like that. Like you know, I I, I knew that was my daddy. I knew who my daddy is. I still know him to this day. But mm-hmm. I just never had a real, real good relationship with him. You know. How do you think that affected your life? Do you do you think looking back on your life now, do you think that if you had um, stayed and as dealt with it that your life would be different uh that's really a good question i, I think it would i think it would because i wouldn't have got into a lot of trouble that i got into in dallas mm-hmm. you know when you're in dallas and you know how everybody you know what everybody doing and you know how to get to what you need to get to in the streets you got the access to it so you're gonna do it but you know I, what you're saying that's familiarity but at the same time if you're gonna get in trouble because i know people who no matter where they move to they yeah. find that trouble right See, so, I didn't get in no trouble in Virginia, though. Mm-hmm. None. I, I I can say that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I didn't get in no trouble in Virginia. Because like, I just didn't know nobody. I right. wasn't out there trying to, you know, run around because I don't know them. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to hang with some dudes I don't know. You know, I, mm-hmm. I wasn't out there trying to make no friends because, you know, I ain't friendly like that. Like, I don't want to be making. I don't know y'all. Do you y'all have don't know kids me. right now? Yeah, I got kids. Do you think that um, not having that bond, do you have any boys? Yeah, I got two boys. Not having that bond with your dad um, affected your life and the way how you look towards your relationship with your boys? For sure. How? Explain. For sure. Because the way I handle them, they'll never not know me. You know what I'm saying? Like, my kids, I signed every birth certificate. I seen every one of them come out. I never lose a relationship with my kids because of my daddy. That's the good point. You know what I'm saying? It. Like, I, I never do that. I don't care if I got to drive 3,000 miles to go see them every day mm-hmm. i'm gonna run these cars ragged because i know how important it was to you know have your father in your life have mm-hmm. him come to your football games have him pick him pick you up from school taking you to the store just to get a toy you know what i'm saying kids value stuff like that so did you ever think that um or do you i don't know if you've ever done it but um went to your father and verbalized how you felt about you know the relationship and the fact that he wasn't there and stuff like that we never had a yeah, conversation nigga. like that we for the grow never. you we yeah. for the grow you we for <laughs> the stretch I'm, you I'm, 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 yeah, I'm gonna tell you you can ask me whatever and, and, we and never you had could a, we, and, and we, that we would make a difference you know like that right yeah it would it also makes because how i believe is that once you still here on this earth you have room for growth no matter how old you are right so you never know that um he might not even be looking at it at a certain way yeah he could want to ask you but then scared to ask him. right or his dad could have been the same way with him right right so this is what somewhere you can break uh something that's been going on for a long time right and i think a lot of times people don't look at it from that perspective they always looking at it from a dang he did that to me right i won't never let that happen to my kids yeah. you see what i'm saying he ain't that, got time that's, to fool that's with exactly it you know how what i mean? look at it that's a, that's how i look at it and i just you know i'm so busy now with doing so much in my career and what i'm doing it's like i don't even have time to revisit that which but, mm-hmm. I do, I can make the time, but I don't even think about making the time. I think about, you know, keeping my situation together, my family together. But you, you gotta know? think about um, where nowadays everything is put on men- mental health, mental h- illness. And to me, that is number one, more than your career, more than anything, else, because things that happen in our lives, that's why a lot of times some people say we're still suffering from slavery mentality. Right. Because that happened how many years, decades you know, ago, but yeah. we're still being affected by it. It comes down in our genes. So 
seeing, say, example, you and your dad get back together and you all bond, your grand, your kids seeing all of that, that can help them move forward with a lot of... And their grandkids. And their, and their kids. And their grandkids. And grandkids. Yeah. So a lot of times I say this world is... I say it's the devil. The devil makes us so busy with creating money for right. our family. We want to work so hard to make sure we leave something for our family. Right. That sometimes the most precious thing we can leave them is memories and lessons. Not always, right. you know, because when you work so much, they say, oh, daddy work a lot. That's what he does because he provides for us. That's what he does. Right. But that's the only thing that they learn. Right. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah, it's so much. It's it's called balance. Okay, that's yeah. all we say. It got to yeah. be some balance in there. Yeah. Um. You know. So when you and did we get it all, or we yeah. still I need? Was we, just talking do we need to dig some more? Experiences too. That's we can dig some more and try to figure out what what happened. No, you can go. Okay. <laughs> you know, all right. We don't let it make it. Then we ain't, we gonna let it make it. Um. No, but. <laughs> now the uh, thing I, I look at is man the music scene in Oak Cliff always been banging man a right. lot of time people uh, how did you end up getting into music um, I'm gonna tell you the truth it's crazy that you said shout out to Go DJ Fresh like that's, that's my guy Fresh one of the people who helped teach me how to DJ he been with me ever you know since what I'm saying? Like, we've been friends for 30, like 30 he, years he, he know me you can ask him about me I'm like, gonna ask him I'm I, damn I, I, I might still, ask him here as soon yeah, as we get off here I, yeah. I stood behind him for, for over three years like watching him and he teaching me different stuff and I didn't even realize he was teaching me as much as he was until after the fact like when I'm by myself, I'm like, oh, he already taught me how to do that. I know how to do that. Wow. I know how to mix. I know how to blend. I know how to count beat waves. Like, he taught me all that. So, you know, like That's I tell dope. him all the time, I can't never, never, ever say thank you enough. He's a very interesting guy. Uh, I think we talked the other day. I bought another computer. Me and him were just talking about yeah. it. We talk about a lot of stuff. Oh, you talking about friends. computers. You talking yeah, about friends. Me and him, we, <laughs> we friends, man. Yeah. Like, like he come, it, we were friends before all this. Yeah. It was just, that's why I say it's, I'm old school with it. Me and yeah. him, we just kind of, he did the music. He got whooped in pool, nigga. You yeah. know I beat you down in pool, nigga. <laughs> UTB days, nigga. You don't want to go there. But at any rate, <laughs> that's my guy. And um, the music thing is, I was sitting in a lot of, lot of damn booths with this dude. And right. a lot of strip clubs. I'm sitting right. in the booth just... Just, I don't do nothing but just sit there and talk to him because he's yeah. my friend, you know. Yeah. Um, but so that's good that you got it firsthand like that. Yeah, fresh. Um, I can't forget to go DJ Thriller and Thriller. Uh, rest in peace, my brother DJ Dip. Okay. DJ Dip, he was one of the real, real big influences on me becoming okay. a DJ. Like, he really pushed for it hard. You know what wow. I'm saying? We from the same side of town. Okay. We used to be in the same side of town a lot. So he seen what I was doing and he knew, like, okay, if you want to do this, you got to do it all the way. You can't halfway do it. So. He pushed me to do it all the way too. So wow, so that was the three people that Thriller, Dip, Fresh. You know what I'm saying? Of course, the big homie DJ High C. You know okay. the CEO to go DJs. He had a big influence on me too. But they kept me. They kept me grounded and got me where I need to be. That's dope, man. Like I said, that's what that's what that's the stories here. Because there's some young kids out there that want to be a DJ. Yeah, believe it or not. And you say, well, what's your young kid? I'm talking about 15, 16, yeah, 17. Really, on and, and I, that's what this show is about. Yeah, it's more about you and your gift and being able to for them to see you and say guess what if, if he did it if dj trap did i could do it you know what i mean and, Man, and that's what number dedication you see what i'm saying so yeah. that, so that's that's what it is so when you first when you first knew you was going to be a dj how did you how did you go into that i mean my somebody first just thing, picked up on you nah, it, it, i'm gonna tell you what happened i uh i went to the club and i seen the dj get paid Oh, about that money. Always about money. <laughs> I, I never forget that day. I seen him get paid, and he gave him the money. He, the wild money was so big, I had to go over there and ask him, like, they pay you that every night? He was like, man, sometime on good nights, sometime it's, it's more than this. You know, it's just, but you're going to have to work a little bit to get to where I'm at. You know, you're going to have to start a little bit lower. So I got with DJ Dip, and I got my first set of equipment. It was some uh, CDJs. I had some Pioneer 800 CDJs. That's back when we was dropping CDs in, in the yeah, turntables, yeah. you know. So I had some CDJs, and then um, DJ Thriller gave me my first mixer. Wow. Shout out to Thriller. He gave me my first mixer, so I had my first setup. You know what I'm saying? I ended up breaking that, too, Thriller. My bad. <laughs> I ended up breaking that mixer, but um, he gave me my first mixer. And after that, I just was every, at home every day practicing, like, every day. People don't know every day. I was practicing. practicing every day. They Shout thought I was just out here just running around, but I was practicing How every day. How old so. were you at that time? Uh, I had to be, I might have been like 22. Okay. 
But I, I, that was at the time I wasn't getting booked in no clubs. I wasn't doing no parties. I was just practicing. I didn't want to go embarrass myself. Did you have a full time job at that time? Nah, I didn't have no job. Bills. I was I, I, I was living with family members and thugging and just okay. just out here in life, just doing whatever. You know, okay. at that it. time I didn't even have my life together. I was just doing whatever, whatever I want to do, whatever gonna make me some money at the time. Let's go do it. You know. So how old were you when you discovered that this is your calling? Um. I say about 25 is when I really said I'm going all the way. And what I motivated bought, you to do that? Was it because I, of your it, kids? It, I started getting success. I started. Okay. See, me, I played basketball when I was younger. You know, so I already knew everybody I needed point to know. Point guard. Yeah, point guard, shooting guard. You, you know, you one and two. You used to get whooped up. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, you be, right. hey, nigga, I, I see right. your boy always crying when he played Thomas, <laughs> yellow beezy. I be seeing them niggas, boy, they act like they in the NBA. Yeah, you know? <laughs> shut up, my boy Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> I be hitting yeah. them all, I say, man, these niggas think they in the NBA, man. But I, started off, I started off with basketball, and, like, that's what I really thought I was going to do. You know, and then after the, school... You ever play them niggas? Who, Yellow and Thomas? Yeah. Yellow be, trash. Who be winning? Thomas trash, too. <laughs> who they be winning? Trash. Who be winning? Yeah, let's yeah, be real. Yeah. Both of them. Both do, of them. Do they ever, you beat both of them. Uh, I'm going to beat both of them every time. They not on your level. No, 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 no. They ain't got no win. Y'all heard that, nigga. I just no put win. it out there. Just what? let y'all know when no he come win. back, Tell nigga. me I hit the gym. What, <laughs> what celebrity have you ever played and they whooped that? That they won? Yes. Uh, we had a celebrity basketball game in North Carolina. Um, I can't even remember what the name of the game was, but he big now, Tusi. I don't know if you okay. heard of Tusi. I never heard him, but. At the time, he wasn't big, you know what I'm saying? But now he big, but he like beat he me. He can't beat you now. Nah, nah, I don't, nah. I got I to gotta win now because he too big. <laughs> I got to win. We got to keep playing until I win. <laughs> we going to have to keep playing until I win. But, I mean, I, I played against a, a few celebrities, you know what I'm saying? Black Youngster, Tusi, um. Uh, but a couple saying YouTube stars. He's the only one that beat you. So yeah, he don't. I mean, we the only one that really played one on one. Everybody okay. else, it was just like a team, team. game. You know, okay. celebrity game, just fun. That, they not taking it serious, but we kind of took it serious afterwards because we was <laughs> betting a little bit. So yeah. I was like, man, let's play. Why are everybody going? We can go and get a one on one game. Oh, uh, really? You, know? you a so. shooter or you like to drive? I'm a shooter, a shooter. for sure. For sure. Oh, we can already, shoot for the cash right that. now. I already know you're going right to do Right now. We can go shoot for the shoot cash for right the now. Cash. Right now. Man, you know, on Boss Talk 101, man, being that we always ask these serious ongoing questions, right? So uh, um, I've been I've been interviewing some people here lately, man. Right. Uh, just um, I, I interview uh, OG, OG Bobby Billions, and mm -hmm. he did a song with Trap, and he did a song with Mo3. Yeah. Uh, what... Do you feel about? Do you think that he should have done that, or, or what's what's what do you think about that? Me personally, my opinion. Yeah, I think he should have did it. Why? Because that shows that he's not taking a side. So you feel like he? People feel like he was taking a side by, oh, I'm only doing music with Mo Three. I'm not doing no music. If he'd have done it, yeah. That if, way. He would, if he if he if he would have, I'm not gonna do no music with Trap Boy. And you from Oak Cliff? Bobby Business is from the Cliff. People mm -hmm. can say what they want to say. I know people that knew this man when he was a little, running around the hood. Like he just wasn't known. Of course, he wasn't blown up, so you're not gonna really notice him if you don't know him. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And Oak Cliff, big people stay in their section. When you in your section, you know if you on Keystone Polk, you on Keystone Polk. Polk. You ain't over here uh, uh, oh, in BFL. You uh, ain't over Beckley here in, in Bakley. You know you in your section, so you you could be in Keystone Polk and somebody from Beckley never know you. That's right. You know what I'm saying? So. It's just he stayed in his section, but I think he did it right. I would have did it the same way. Same way. I would have did it. And he he asked Freddie to do the song. Like, it wasn't a thing of Freddie came like Mo3. Mo3 asked Bobby to do that song. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That song was already out. Yeah. Mo3 asked Bobby to get on that song. And then he gave him one of the best verses oh. he ever had. Oh, he gave it to you him. You know what I'm saying? So... I think both of them was needed on that song. You can't take either person off that song. And, it's and, and a big thing it right now yeah, in, in yeah. Dallas. Everybody's right. saying this and saying that. That's why I asked you because it's a hot. The bloggers yeah. are talking. Everybody you, like you. You get, you can't take either part off because Bobby already had the song out before Mo Three ever got on it. The song was out. The song was getting played in the club. Everything when he got on it. Of course, it gave it a boost. It took off. You know what I'm saying? Because it hit the he Billboard did charts. Say that. He did say that it was out yeah. before, but like nobody heard it, really. Uh, no. Like, no. Like, people, people say it was on the radio. It. I heard it, it was, it was on the radio. It was moving. But it was growing. It's like Mo3 was just a good person at the time to get on a song. And you mm -hmm. see what happened. It, mm -hmm. 
You know, Grew it's up. like a song growing and you put a big artist on it. It's going to start moving more. It's going to it's gonna take off even faster. So Do you he, feel that if anybody else would have been the person on there other than Mo3, like example, Blueface, if Blueface mm -hmm. had gotten it before you know, did he get three. it before? He did. He did get it before. But see, yes. the thing but about it is, it. It, did he? he didn't release it. Right. He didn't release yeah. it. But so you think that if he did and released it before um, Mo3 got on it, do yeah. you think it would have done? Just done what it did with right. Mo3? No. Mo3, that was Mo3's type of song. That was his type of song. But if you really be honest, you want to be honest, if you go look at the streams, Blueface, just he got as much streams as the version with Mo3 do. Mm -hmm. If you go look at the views on YouTube, it's more views on his video. Didn't Bobby say it was more on? Don't let that out the hat. Yeah, well, this will come out afterwards. <laughs> look, but yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll tell people, look, go look, look for you right now. Go it, look for yourself. We just interviewed yeah, by OG yeah. Bobby Bill, and, and he, he actually said, showed us that. Yeah, we already, yeah. that we know that yeah, to be he true. Said blue face is way I pay attention. I watch everything You just said on what he showed, yeah. he showed us that online. You can go see it yourself. You can go to YouTube right now and type it in like, it's more it's more of you so you can say what you want to say we just saying that because we from here and you can't have we know the backstory of how the song came up and right. how it blew up we saying that from the outside I looking in like blue face is the big artist yeah, yeah he, he was is. at yeah. the time when it was done he's we, still we the big down, artist we sit down yeah. and listen to both songs and we just well i personally i can't speak for you no you can't i uh, <laughs> Mo3, it just seemed right for Mo3 to be right. on that compared it's his type to You can song. speak for me on right. that. Yeah, you're right like, on that. I didn't really like Blueface on it. I, lo I love Mo3 version. I like Blueface on it. I just didn't love Blueface on it. But we, I like that. We heard it a certain way. So then you hear it a different way. You're like, man, if you would have heard that one first, you might have liked it. No, nah, I would have still you liked Mo3 better. Yeah, but... I mean, I, I think that, like I said, I think that was three type of song. That's his type of, that's his type of flow. Like, was he the first one came? Cause you know, a lot of people on that singing thing, like the, the yeah. Rod Wave, the T Rails, it's a lot of people. Yeah, the, it's, it's a lot. Uh, more Rays. Because yeah. R&B is coming back. No, I'm not talking about that. that part. I'm trying to ask my questions here. When did you first see that style come into play? Like it is the singing, the singing. Yeah, that's type what they doing. That's what. Pain. Yeah, yeah. I mean, is it Mo Three me, in Dallas? In Dallas, of course it is. And Dallas for sure. But I mean, in the industry, I mean, that's Kevin Gates. That's Rye Wave. Kevin Gates. That's that's you know what I'm saying? That that that's Rich Homie Kwan. Like they singing they sing rap. Yeah, you know what I'm do. saying? It's more of a harmonized. But it it's wasn't a, really it a wasn't singing. that deep depth pain like yeah. that though. It wasn't He had his own he had his own way of putting out his music, his own way of that's what made him special. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. he had his own way of putting out the music. You know what I'm saying? Everybody knew he could rap. Everybody say, man, he could rap. He really got it. It just took a while for him to make it to where he was trying to make it to. Yeah. But that voice, though, because the first, I, I didn't really never listen to Mo3 rap before. Right. Until I heard him sing. Right. When I heard him sing, like, on his um, lives and stuff, that's where I saw him singing first. And I was like, he can really sing. Passion. And, right. And you felt everything he was saying. And that's what I loved about him. So that made me go search for his music and right. look for all of his songs right. because of him singing. Now, right. for you to be a, you, you now you are Trap Boy Freddy's DJ. Yeah, that's my boy. That's your boy. That's so brother. when you, with all the controversy surrounding this, right. you guys are going, you went, you was with him even when all this stuff started. Right, before it started. The, the Say Cheese video, the right. where they was going back and forth, right. the the song that he that that Mo three didn't happen to be on all of right. all of stuff that everybody on the internet see. Right. How did that affect you far as being a DJ? I mean, it made me, it made me end up in a lot of uncomfortable situations. That's what I would say. Yeah. I was thinking yeah. that way. I'm I mean, like, it, this it, dude had to be in some real yeah. uncomfortable situations. It's, it's, just, it, it's like it's like. Give me a story. It, it, I'm gonna tell, tell you. I'm gonna explain to you exactly how it is. <laughs> We on Boss Talk one on one. Boss Talk one on one. We gotta talk the real. Talk, you know what I'm bitch. saying? So look, when it happened, I remember the day it happened. I remember okay. the day the static first happened. This was years ago. This was almost four or five years ago. Okay. When it first happened, and I what said, day it "Was on Monday or Tuesday?" I, I don't oh, know. Damn. I don't know what day <laughs> it was. What day? Go I know ahead, I was man. at home. Go ahead with the story, <laughs> yeah, baby. Yeah. I know I was at home looking at Instagram, and I know it. it it hit the internet. It was going on before the internet. But it hit the you know internet. But it hit the internet. You know what I'm saying? With, with, with Mo3 doing lives and, you know, just yelling and screaming and saying this and this and that. You know what I'm saying? So now people taking the sides and taking opinions. I never was a person to be like, okay, I can be cool with bro. 
you know what I'm saying, and be on this side because you on one side or the other. You know what I'm saying? That's just how it worked. Like, mm -hmm. I'm on this side. I'm cool money. I'm cool money entertainment. I've been cool money. I knew Freddie before he even rapped one verse. Before he ever was rapping, I knew him. Before he ever put out one CD, you know what I'm saying? I knew him. That was already my partner. Mm -hmm. So when he got with the rap and I became his DJ, that was just, oh, that's my brother. We're going to do this together. It never was a DJ rapper relationship. So when this happened, it wasn't no question whose side I'm on. Right. It ain't. I can't even think to even be on no other side but that side because that's my brother. I'm riding with my brother. Just like if it would have happened to me, he would have rode with me. But at the same time, we in the club and the song popular, so I still have to play that song. Wow. That, that's part of the business. Like, see, but I was. That's the part I'd wonder about. Like, if he would say to you, "You can't play that song no more." Right. Right. I mean. One thing about one 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 one, one thing like about Trap Boy Freddie, Trap Boy Freddie, way smarter than people think he is. He's smart. He know what goes on. He knows situations. He's been no, in situations. I already felt you know that way. So he already knew. Hey, it's gonna be a point where this song hitting the Billboard charts. He gonna have to play that no, in no, the no. club. In the club. Now I cannot play it in certain in clubs. Car, you know what I'm saying? I'm not listening to it in my car. I'm not bumping it, walking down the street, but when it get to a premiere part of the club, and this song right now is probably the most streamed song in Texas, besides Megan Thee Stallion and, you know, Travis Scott and Beyonce, you know, they Texas artists. Besides them, outside of them, that's the number one song streamed in the whole state. That's correct. You know, so you can't, that's like, why would I not play that? That's like me going in the club and not playing Young Thug Ski. It's like me going to the club and not playing Drake. Way too sexy. Like, well, come back to where, where you got you was in that when it, when you felt like the, the tension from, I mean, from when it, it was hit just, the internet. It, it was just you know I'm in the club. You know it's North Dallas people in the club. Okay. It's Oak Cliff people in the club. You know what I'm saying I'm playing the records, but I always play both records. Anybody that know me that been in the club, if I play outside, I'm playing a Trap Boy Freddie record after that. Yeah. That's how it's going. Woo. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's a lot of situations where it got sticky. You know what I'm saying? Real but, sticky. But people understand one thing about me. Hey, if you're going to come for me, you got to come all the way. Correct, yeah. So, you know, once you understand that, you got to go with the consequences. Like, you know what I'm saying? Any 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 step that you take past, oh, I'm going to tell him to take, cut this off or you're going to cut this off, I'm going to play what I want to play. Yeah. Ain't nobody cutting off nothing, no matter what club I go to. Can't no promoter tell me to cut nothing off. Can't Have no nobody. Tried? Nah. I didn't no, think nah. so. Ain't no promoter never told me No, that. Nah. no. So the the times when you look at all the stuff that transpired and all, what can make Dallas a place where people can come together when they do the music but still have differences? You see, what I'm, that's where I'm at. Because yeah. when I go to Atlanta, yeah. or when I'm in Chicago, or where I'm in Vegas, I feel like the music music is a priority. But here, right. it's like we've split this thing so much yeah. to where everybody just kind of just intense because of what happened. Right, it was a big deal. You know, a lot of people. You know, we have a lot of lost lives behind right. this. So, how can we get back there? And I know it's a complicated question. I, I think I, I really think. In that particular situation with these two 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 sides. We can't really they, just talk they, about they, them. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I know they're where you probably go. They're not, I'm not worried about them. I didn't ask <laughs> but, about them per se. Yeah. I asked you how. You understand I mean, what I'm saying? How can we how can we evolve? You over, know oh, I think over time over time things are things will blow over and people will forget it. You know what I'm saying? Not saying they're gonna forget his name or nothing like that, but over time people will forget it and I think we'll, you know, we'll level up and we'll get to the point where we're a mecca. Cause Dallas has got the we got the eyes on us. Not only do you have you the eyes, there's a lot of talent here. Yeah. It's um, more than enough talent. More here. than enough talent. That's yeah. the part that and and another question I always ask, yeah. uh, why do you think Dallas and, and if you answer I know the answer, I think, <laughs> but why do you think Dallas and Houston uh, could never uh, uh, look as if they're one when you look at Texas. Egos. Egos, Egos. too strong. Like It's just like, you know, everybody that's, that's, that's rapping, they not paying attention that Freddie and Yellow, they stay connected and they work their way up the chain to the music industry. If you watch it, everybody like, oh, that's his partner. No, they stay connected. It's not, they don't got nothing to do with my partner. They've been my partner before I was rapping. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of people that's my partner before I was rapping and when I was rapping. But the thing about it is, hey, I know I'm gonna make it to this business. I'm gonna make it to this business meeting. I'm gonna make it to this 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 label meeting. You know, 
I need you to come. Why? Because you need to know the people that's there too. Yeah. But how many artists in Dallas don't want to do that? Yeah. They want to go by themselves. Oh no, nah, I don't want to take him. That ain't that ain't nah, man. You know, I want to I, I want to get him. I want to go by myself. I want to go meet with the label by myself mm -hmm. instead of both of y'all going to meet with the label. Both of y'all presenting y'all music mm -hmm. and let them pick. Hey, if we gonna sign both of y'all. We gonna sign one of y'all. You know what I'm saying? It's just it's the egos. It's the, it's egos. the I want to blow up on my own. I don't want I don't want to be. Oh, it's trapping yellow. You know, that ain't never been a problem for them. Both so, of them being successful. So you know when saying? you look so, at that, I'm, I'm back to Dallas and Houston. Yeah. When you think about, I said it was because of damn football teams and the prison. <laughs> think about yeah, it. Yeah, that too. Because <laughs> yeah, a nigga too. go down there, they ain't getting alone. Nah, And they sure. will kill you over a football game. For sure. I'm being real, for in sure. prison. And yeah. in the streets, nigga wearing these stars everywhere. For sure. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, So that's think it. about it. And then you go down there, and it's like, it, it's like yeah. it, I think sports do a lot to it. Sports, I mean, like I say, egos, um, it's the money. You know what I'm saying? A lot the of money. People, a lot of people got their own money. So they look at it like, what I need to link with you for, and I can pay for it myself. You know what I'm saying? What I need to link with you for, and I got a label. You know what I'm saying? They helping me. Like, it's just, it's a lot. It's a lot. I don't even know if that could ever happen. See what I mean? I don't know if that could ever happen, to be honest. Now, with you. And you told us she had a good question. My damn yeah, question was good, good question. too. I don't you think know that could ever happen. <laughs> because it's, it's the, the opinions and stuff so strong, and the money. People in Houston, they getting their money. People in Dallas getting, getting their money. money. We it's a lot of money, people. too. They backing their people. You know what I'm saying? They got the mob down there. We got the New Dallas movement. Like, you know what I'm saying? We, it, it, it's all like they doing their thing. We doing our thing. So how would it ever come together? What, what happened to that boy? Uh, is it Smurf Franklin over there? Yeah. How's he doing? He good. He good? Smurf good. Man, Smurf okay. working out. Smurf chisel, man. Okay. He, he over there looking like Buff Bagwell, man. <laughs> <laughs> Smurf doing yeah, his Smurf thing. Frankly, I'm thinking he got some of, new music coming too, man. Look out man, for Smurf. Oh yeah, yeah, he got some new music. Okay, coming. well, back in the day, did you ever get to play Gator Man on your damn man? Though? I didn't walk the <laughs> block. I didn't walk the block yeah, to my to feet slap. and to slap for better like, or for worse. Look, and the crazy thing about Gator Man is like I knew him. I seen him all the time, but I didn't know his music. Really? I didn't know. I knew that song, but I ain't know his music. Oh, like go I, I knew him. Facts though. of life. I, I knew him from the the streets and people talking about him. Yeah, I knew him. See, I'm a ball player, man, baby, going hard to the hole. When Gator you Man was coming out, <laughs> I was on Big Chief. You know, I love Big that's Chief. That's how we was on. Nigga, I love Don Chief. Man. <laughs> that's what we was on. That's Listen, how we man, was on. I, I gotta get. I gotta BSR get. Man, and, you know, that, love that's, them that's boys, what we was man. On. When, when Gator came out, you know, when Gator was doing this thing, you know, he was still doing his thing, but I just wasn't tuned in to him. I was on the people that I was on, Webby and Boosie, and yeah, you know, what I'm saying that's the people we grew up on. We love definitely. Them so, with that being said, I need the top three artists of all time. Dead or alive. Dead or alive, alive, any genre. That's a dangerous question. Oh, number one. Everybody that been in that seat answered right. that question. Number one. Right. Top three artists, dead or alive, all time. Number one. Ooh. That's a, ooh, that's a hard one. Um. Uh, I wish I would go back and get fresh. I'll go uh, back and spin it on him. Oh uh, man. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean. I'm, I'm gonna speak on myself, myself, me. That's what you supposed to speak on. Most niggas coming here and get mirage. My, my, my number one, my number one artist of all time got to be Boosie. Damn, we grew up on Boosie. Boy, like, if I that's had all my, we co to. my other co host here, he from Louisiana, he'll love you. Mm -hmm. that, that's all we listen to. Like when we was coming up, we were listening to Boosie and Webby. Like, yeah, that's what we was listening to. Like Boosie, Webby, Jeezy, and Jeezy. Like Jeezy so was. So is that you top three? No, nah, he ain't say he gonna say that. Number two, nah, I, ain't, I ain't gonna say that's my number top three, two. but I'm saying that's the people we was listening to. Number, number two, two, number two all time NBA young boy. Boosie, NBA Let me get young in there. Boy. NBA young boy. I'm he locked I'm up talking about right mine, now. My, 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 NBA me, young boy. You love, me, love his music. Now you a young, DJ. Young, I young value boy, what you young say. Young boy, one of the best rappers ever. 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 Why? The the impact he got on people. People really want to be him. Like people cry when that man went to jail. And never met him a day in their life. Damn. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like and he got real and he fans. Was, he was the third one to go. Uh, it was Pac, him, and one more person to go number one while being incarcerated. Yep. It was one more person, and I can't remember who it is. But it was one more. Yeah, I can't remember. I yeah, got young boy. Out. Young boy. Young boy is probably one of the best rappers ever. Wow. Like as far as like street rappers talking what they living. Like he really going through what he's saying. Like if y'all really listen to his music, you can see. Hey, this going on with him, man. He getting wow. jammed up and out. He been doing that, and he been doing it since a young age. So I just like his flow, you know what I'm saying, and and how he put his life situations in his music. 
You know what I'm saying? But it ain't turning out good for him right now. But nah, he gonna come home. <laughs> but he, yeah, he gonna be come home. home. They got a lot of money and a lot of lawyers and a lot of a lot of things good for Number him. Number three. Number three. Man, who I say, Boosie, young boy. Uh, I've man, I gotta say, look, I gotta say, Webby or G. No, Damn. you say Webby. <laughs> That's my nigga Savage Life, nigga. I gotta say, I gotta say Jeezy then. You say Jeezy? I gotta say Jeezy. We, I ain't saying Jeezy. That nigga did, hey man, uh, what was that? I used to hit, his, the, his, hit his, the kitchen flow. That was cockroaches everywhere. Yeah. Hit the, now nah, marble flows everywhere. That was way, you remember that Jeezy, song? That man, nigga was going I know in. every Jeezy song he ever put out. <laughs> that nigga got in. Man, Jeezy, when we was coming up, my era of growing up in high school, I college. I zip lock this and yeah. zip lock that. This nigga on that Jeezy. That nigga had them ad libs going, didn't he? Was he was on that Jeezy. He had the anthems. He had the whole CDs. Like, you play the whole CD. You can let that whole rock. The whole CD. But I ain't it, gonna it, lie to like, you. It's just like, it's so hard to pick yeah, the three like Gucci that. go hard too, nigga. You Gucci gonna try to go say that. That nigga got a million Gucci. songs. He did it. And he, he and did the three. Yeah, I know he did it. But that I think you left Gucci out, nigga. I'm Gucci, nigga. Stop I mean, I, playing. I love Gucci. But and you know, I'm PMC. I'm PMC. There wouldn't, wouldn't play, be no Boosie without PMC. I wouldn't, so. I wouldn't play Gucci over Boosie. You wouldn't? I wouldn't play Gucci over NBA Youngboy, though. That's just me. I I wouldn't do it because I look at it like, why would I, this is why I really like this. Right with seen, niggas. Yeah, that's why when I was coming up, I go out what I was I like, hearing I, when I was I coming like up. I like your top yeah, three. Yeah, yeah. I like it. I mean, you you got to admit it's yours. It's Boosie. Yeah. It's uh, uh, who else did you say? NBA Young Boy and, and Jeezy. That's a good, that's that's dope. If you talk about urban music, you talk about hip hop, you got to say them three names. That's heavy. Um, That's my boy Boosie on the wall. Right? That's my yeah, boy right there, right man. There. Yeah, he good dude though. I see him real talk, there. real, real. When you meet him, just like you, yeah, just a real nigga. Yeah, he regular, real nigga. He regular. Um, so, um, what did you think when he got shot over there in Oak Cliff at the Big T? I'm gonna yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm say it like this: that situation happened because of him. Okay, explain. You know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't even gonna speak too much on it. All I'm gonna say is he made that situation happen to him. That's how it went. Like. You got to understand you not in your side of town. You in somebody else's hood. If you don't respect somebody else's hood, it can go bad for you. Either way you look at it. You know what I'm saying? So them people that did what they did, they feel like he was disrespecting them. Wow. So they did what they did. That's any hood you go to, though. You can go anywhere in America, and they feel like you disrespecting them. They going to do something about it. Wow. And and, and you know. like I said, I seen it coming. I heard a lot of talk, you know, mm -hmm. just from the outside looking in. I'm like, wow, man, because I love Boosie. And and not only that, I, I'm i in Oak Cliff every day. That's yeah. my hood. Like, I'm, it ain't my hood, but I be, I, yeah. you know. You be in the section. That's how this store got here. Yeah. Meaning I was going over there frequenting every weekend. I was single. Yeah. And, you know, before I met you, you know, I used to go there. Yeah. And, and it's 20 years ago. Yeah. That's where I go. Yeah. And. I didn't know I was going to do no store either at the time. I was looking at girls. That's why I was going. Yeah. That's why all the women come on the weekend. Sunday used to be a beast back then. Before yeah. that, it was Glendale Park I was yeah. at. I've stayed in that little vicinity. Just make the yeah. circle at Big T. Go down to Glendale. Right. Come back up. Right. Stop at that rage track right there. Yeah. Come, Nigga, come on yeah. now. Yeah. You know I did it. Go by the chicken place yeah. right there at Williams. Williams. They don't yeah. Williams. We used to kick it though. Am I right? Yeah. You're I'm right. on it, ain't I? Do that's, they that's, still that's, do that down there? Yeah, yeah still nigga. Do. We were, when I was doing it for real, I was jamming Big Mike. You don't know nothing about that. I was coming <laughs> through, man. Yeah. And that's the way we did yeah. it. And so yeah. when when I even after that, I just hung at Big T. Big T is the place to be. Yeah. You come to Dallas, every nigga I come through Big T. Oak Cliff Landmark. Yeah. So yeah. you know, um, that's yeah. So you you I gotta have I gotta have Oak Cliff if I do Dallas. There's yeah. no Oak Cliff that takes a lot from Dallas. You Think take about away that Oak for a Cliff minute. out of out of the, out of Texas. Dallas, DFW, you can't do it. It's too important. It's important. That, that, that's like taking away Big T out of Oak Cliff. It can't it's do it. It's too important. If you come from out of town and you like, hey, what's this place I be hearing about called? Big T. You got to go by Big T. You got to. You got to. That's dope, man. I like it. Yeah. So do, if, you, if you could go back and talk to that 16-year-old uh, boy, 17-year-old boy that, that uh, you know, left his dad. And, yeah. And, and you knew you was about to face everything you about to face. What, yeah. what, what would you mom. say? Left my mama out. No, you left your dad when you came from down oh, yeah, now. Yeah, you, yeah, you that, didn't want to deal semester. with it that yeah, one semester. Yeah. What would you say to yourself to prepare yourself for what you was about to face, knowing what you know now? That's heavy because you'd be talking to yourself. I tell myself, 
you got to look at what's going on and, and move smarter with the situation. Like, the streets was never the answer. Okay. I, you, I feel like that for everybody. You tell him to be, be yeah, more strategic yeah, yeah. on what the he did. The streets was never the answer. Like, I had a, I was touching a lot more money than I thought when yeah. I look back at it. Like, people was giving me stuff, you know what I'm saying? I was touching a lot of money, and I could have opened a lot of businesses. Mm -hmm. I could have made more smarter moves with my money instead of just spending on clothes and, you know what I'm saying, just going out to the club, balling, trying to buy bottles, trying to be like the next man, you know what I'm saying? I just wasn't, my mind wasn't all the way there yet. I wasn't realizing, hey, man, you got what you need, you okay. know what I'm saying? So it just was a thing I should have, I could have made smarter moves, but like I say, I was a kid, you know? Yeah, so how did you? I was a kid. So. How did you get the name DJ Trap? Um, man, it really came from a couple of my partners. You know what I'm saying? A couple of my partners was called, we was trying to figure out a name, I ain't know. And then they was calling me Trap T, and I was like, at the time I was doing some hustling, you know what I'm saying? So that's what they was like, Trap, you know what I'm saying? I was like, man, I don't wanna call myself no Trap. Trap T. And you know, and then, um, my granny had showed me, I can't remember what, it was on TV or it was on the newspaper. She showed me something that said, take risk and prosper. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, that's the acronym of trap. Trap. Because I'm a risk taker. Like, I ain't I ain't scared to take no risk because I feel like with no risk is no reward. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, I'm just going to roll with it because people was already calling me that anyway. So mm -hmm. I was like, I ain't no reason to try to take, you know, change the name. I'm just going to roll with it. Because the name don't define the person. The person define the name. How, how, what's the hottest song right now in the city? Or in the, to you? The hottest song out hottest in song the club? Out right now. The hottest song out right now? If you really just want to say the hottest, Drake, way too sexy. Okay. Okay. Drake, way too sexy. Yeah. What's next? Drake. Then I, I right behind Drake, I put Young Thug. Ski. That nigga, that young thug. Yeah. That's the nigga y'all, you, you connected to him. Yeah, yeah. Trapping him. Yeah, That's his brother, boy right there. My, my brother really, really close to thug. Like, real, your, real your, close your, to your thug. Per, your real brother. Nah, Freddie. Freddie, okay. Yeah, That's what I was going to say. Yeah, you call your brother. Yeah. Yeah, what I was going to say. Yeah, he, he always see him. They yeah. always, they always chop it up. He real close to thug. Like, he, yeah, he almost had, a, I mean, he almost signed to him. <clears> like, that was that close. I didn't know you. My son had, had linked me with you. Yeah. And uh, I made the call this morning to find out if you really was locked in with him. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he said you was. Yeah, for sure. I, I, I put in the call. I said, hey, call him, see if this nigga knows yeah. you. <laughs> you think I'm playing? Ask him <laughs> you when you talk to, to him. Hey, he I'll gonna be like, damn, you. damn. Yeah. He, hey, I, I got to him, yeah. I promise you. He yeah. said you was official. Yeah, for sure. That's dope, man. Yeah, for sure. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I love it when, when the real connection is there. I like the show to be organic. I don't yeah. want nobody coming come in like, nah, that nigga don't even know. So, so yeah. I'm like, I ain't even do my show like that. <laughs> I knew Freddie before he was rapping. I knew Yellow before he was rapping. Yeah. I knew Uno Loso I didn't call all these either, but yeah. I could have. That's my boy, man. Shout out my nigga Loso. Yeah, he always messes with me. Some good pointers on different stuff. Yeah. We talk about Lowe stuff. Lowe be doing his thing. He real, he real unique in in what he does. Yeah, I met Lowe when he was rapping. Yeah, yeah, that Before nigga come on. Managing. When he was on here, I yeah. played the songs, nigga. Yeah. We got down on here. <laughs> nigga had a song with with, with uh, MC uh, with uh, with a uh, uh, eight ball and MJG. Yeah. Yeah, I was listening. He had a song he was pushing with Snooty Wild. Yeah, he a, yeah. He had a couple songs. He, he a dope, though. Yeah. I like his son, too. Uh, Ziggy going yeah, hard he on the beats, beats, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah he yeah, was yeah. on here. I yeah. love them boys, man. When it comes down to it. And they stand focused. That's yeah, what sure. I like so much about him. He man. getting them at an early age, so you know, he going to be good at what he do because he practicing repetition, you know what I'm saying, at an early age. By the time he get 21, 22, 23, he going to be a killer when making beats. You know okay. Yeah. So you change the mood of music of, of of clubs with the music. Yeah. Yeah. Like you can stop certain things from happening. That's what DJ uh, Go DJ Fresh said. Say he could he he would see something escalating and he could tone it a different way. Playing the right song. Right song at the right time. Change the mood. Don't song it? selection very important in DJ. Wow. Yeah. Very important. What song you play after what song? The time that you play the song is important. People think we just be up there just playing songs. <laughs> and you don't go like that. Do you have a gig like that you do weekly or anything like yeah, that? Yeah, I got four gigs I do weekly. Well, can, do can we know? Yeah, on Friday I'm at Status. On Saturday I'm at OT Tavern. On Sunday I'm either at Turkey Dam or I'm at Lofty Spaces. And then on Tuesday I'm at uh, King Tut Hookah Lounge. Wow. So do you? That's uh, right now. Do you um um. Like, 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 how can people get a hold of you? Oh, like man, on your Instagram my, or whatever? All my social media, go DJ Trap. G-O-D-J-T-R-A-P. Everything. Man. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, it's all the same. Wow. Thank you so much, man. We love you, brother. Man, I appreciate it.
Say, we did it, man. Boss Talk 101, we did it. We got DJ Trap on here. You niggas in trouble. Yeah, we calling out the real ones. Hey. We real close to the streets. Hey. Yeah, and everything we need to know, we pick up the phone, we could call them. So y'all better know, man. Boss Talk 101, we here to stay. We ain't going we nowhere. We on Boss Talk 101, so we're going to say this. <laughs> What's that? Every DJ you brought up here, I done did more clubs than them. Really? I done did the most clubs than any DJ in my city. Fort Worth, Dallas, Grand Prairie, Arlington. It ain't no DJ in my city that did more clubs than me. Go look at you it. You hit him. Y'all heard that DJ. Put, pick your weight up, niggas. He, he ain't bragging. He's just stating the facts, man. Holla mm-hmm. at your boy, man. It's a unique hustle, man. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. And we out.